very happy to be here with you today. My joy is uh, uh, increased by the opportunity now to be able to do something very special for you. I have been asked and happily do bless these very beautiful medals of Peter and Paul. And Peter and Paul are uh, figures on these medals, one on each side, and each one of you will be receiving one of these medals later on today as a remembrance of our participation together in this happy, happy day of the 100th anniversary of St. Peter and Paul Parish. And so I enter into this prayer saying, let us pray. Almighty everlasting God, you do not forbid us to represent your saints in stone, paint, or carving, so that as often as we look upon their likeness with the eyes of the body, we may, with the eyes of faith and the mind, meditate upon their holiness and be led to imitate all that they have done. In your kindness, we implore you to bless and to sanctify these lovely metals, which are meant to honor and call to mind the virtuous life and the mission work of Saints Peter and Saint Paul. And grant that through these medals that all would humbly strive to honor these apostles, Peter and Paul. May by their merits and intercession we gain from you grace in this life and glory in the life to come. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you, in unity with the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon these metals and remain with us forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us rise as we begin our worship today and say, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Let us kneel now for the sacrament of penance. And <clears throat> enter into that holy exercise with this reflective prayer. O oh Lord, we confess that we have often lived for ourselves only. We confess that we have squandered what we have received from you by your grace. We confess that we have lived with no thought for the needs of others. And we confess that there are times when our confessions are made only with our lips and little else. Let us together now recite the form of the confidior provided for us in our order of service. And let us say together, I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers. For your penance on this celebration day of the 100th anniversary of your parish, do make an accounting of how you have used the blessings that God has given you and be grateful for them and continue to use them in the future as you receive them from God's hand. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you. And I, through the authority given unto me by him, do absolve you of all your sins 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will offer praise in the great assembly. My vows I will fulfill before those who fear him. Praise, praise God in his holy sanctuary. Give praise to the mighty Lord heaven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be the world A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The favors of the Lord I will recall, the glorious deeds of the Lord, because of all he has done for us, for he is good to the house of Israel. He has favored us according to his mercy and his great kindness. He said, that are indeed my people, children who are not disloyal, 
So he became their savior in their every affliction. It was not a messenger or an angel, but he himself who saved them. Because of his love and pity, he redeemed them himself, lifting them and carrying them all the days of old. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that him you were enriched in every way with all the discourse and all the knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you were not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you are called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
true. Your word is true. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. I pray not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you loved them even as you loved me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Father Boguslav Janiec, our pastor, Father Senior Urbania, Father Senior Donald Michalko, uh, uh, Donald Wonderlich, let's see who else we have. And we have Father Senior Dimkowski. We have a lot of people today, this is wonderful. <laughs> Father Uchishin from Bethlehem, Father Tuda from Jersey, Father Voschak. Father Plichta, a plethora of, of deacons. We have Deacon Joseph Kielbasa all the way from Florida with us today. And I believe his grandson is traveling with him too. We have Deacon Michael Seward. And we have Deacon Robert Karosik. And hiding in the wings, we have cleric Sean Dodd, who is studying to be a priest, that he's our crucifer today. You see him walking in and out, and he'll lead us out as well. We have our acolytes, the children. My dear brothers and sisters, I greet each and every one of you in the name of our risen and victorious Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy anniversary, happy birthday. To all of you here at Saints Peter and Saints Paul, I greet you in that particular way. You're 100 years old today, and boy, do you look good. <laughs> you do. I'm so proud of you and your 100-year history. You've really gone through an awful lot to establish a non-papal Catholic community in this particular area, and you remain so at, at no, small, uh, no small expense to yourself and to the members of your families down through the generations for the past hundred years. 
Now, do you know why I uh, commented on your looks on this 100th anniversary of your parish? Well, I said that because as I look at you, I see the elegant stones that St. Peter talks about in his letter when he describes the church. I see superbly carved stones. I look out at you and I see living stones. Very important because that is how St. Peter sees you and me as Christians. In his first letter, Peter describes how God is building his church and then filling it with the Holy Spirit for each of you in order that you would have something of distinction, that you would have something that is crucial and essential to the church, each according to whatever gifts you have been receiving from God by his good grace and through the Holy Spirit. You are God's church, not the building. Beautiful as it is and important as it is to each and every one of us, you are living stones built on the firm foundation of the apostles. And the most important stone within that structure is Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. And we're going to sing about him in that reference a little later in our offertory hymn when it uh, comes time for that. And now as living stones, each of you is being individually shaped and formed by Jesus Christ. Jesus baptized you as a living stone and then he began to sculpt you and chip away at some of the things that don't need, aren't needed and he's forming you into his likeness, into the way he looks, and to the way he is. <clears throat> Throughout your whole life, he's been fashioning you in order that each of you can be set into the place that you belong to within the structure of the church, that church which he's building with you, the living stones. And why does all this happen? It's because <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ wants the world to see in you his skill as a sculptor of stones that live. Our Lord wants his skill <coughs> in being that sculptor of living stones to be seen by the world in the holiness of the life that you lead out there in front of other people. A holiness which is characterized by your talents and treasure that you offer to each other here and you offer to God cheerfully and in a sacrificial degree as well. Our Lord needs the world to see his skills displayed clearly in your life for other people to see through your willingness to, to, to go the second mile when somebody's in need and, and even, up, even to put up with hardship and long hours here at church, working on the church and for the church and caring for each other within the church because you are the church. As living stones, the world sees you as somewhat different from them because living stones have a different lifestyle from the world. You're fashioned not according to the world's standards, but you're fashioned in the likeness and the image of the sculptor who makes you appear as he does. 
Now, one other thought yet <clears throat> for today's celebration, and it's this. <clears throat> Expect that what happened to you in the past is going to happen again. You will encounter opposition again. Not from another church, as before. You will encounter opposition, however, from the world outside that fights against religion and against Jesus Christ and against you, his faithful believers. And yet, that opposition that you're going to experience as Catholic Christians comes upon you, you must never give in to those people who will tell you and try to explain to you that the world is in better shape now than it ever was and therefore doesn't need the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That it doesn't need the Polish National Catholic Church. That it doesn't need people like you. People of faith and goodness and the struggle to follow in the ways of your Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. After all, I think you'll agree with me that it's only too obvious to us today that the world does need Jesus Christ. It does need the Polish National Catholic Church, and it does need you out there in it as his faithful father. After a hundred years, your work as Polish National Catholic Christians is not ended. As people of God, your holy work here among each other and for the world goes on and on and on and will continue all the way until the second coming of Christ. <coughs> Just as you have done then for the past 100 years, I expect you to continue to attend faithfully to God's holy work here at St. Peter and Paul for the next hundred years. And not only do I expect you to attend to God's holy work here, but I expect that you will do so as the beautifully carved living stones that you are set firmly into God's church on God's <coughs> solid foundation where Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. God bless you all. And God bless our beloved Saints Peter and Paul Parish here in Macadoo. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's continue now in uh, reflecting upon the readings that we heard and considering the message that I've just given to you by responding to it all with our profession of faith. I believe in one God. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God from God, life from life, to God from to God, He God from not made, of one being the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven.
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I am one baptism of the Jesus Christ. I love the church of the dead and the life of the world's God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Because we are a living temple for God in the Spirit, let us now invoke the grace and peace of Jesus Christ for the church and for the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Polish National Catholic Church, together with Prime Bishop Anthony, may our faithful people be filled with the Holy Spirit's life and gifts. Rejoicing in God, our Savior, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Central Diocese and our Bishop Bernard, may the Church in this local continue to proclaim the glories of God in word and sacrament. Rejoicing in God, our Savior, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For this com parish community, together with our pastor, Boguslav, may our faith, hope, and love flourish through the intercession and protection of Blessed Mary and Saints Peter and Paul. Rejoicing in God, our Savior, we pray. Lord, for all who enter these doors in search of God's peace and healing love, may they find us to be a rich haven of compassion and a vibrant community of faith in the risen Christ. <laughs> Rejoicing in God our Savior, we pray. Lord, Lord, For all who will proclaim God's word here and celebrate the sacraments of life, may those who minister in our midst be received as instruments of Christ's love for the church. Rejoicing in God our Savior, we pray. Lord, for all who help to build this house of prayer, because of their love for God and the church, may their generosity and dedication be pleasing in God's sight. Rejoicing in God, our Savior, we pray. Lord, hear our for our beloved who passed away, may they be found praising God in the company of the angels and saints. Rejoicing in God, our Savior, we pray. Lord, for ourselves who proclaim the dying and rising of the Lord at this table of unity, may the Eucharist be the center of our lives together. Rejoicing in God, our Savior, we pray. Lord, hear our O God, ever gracious and kind, receive our prayers this day, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us united in Christ, who intercedes for us at your right hand. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the altar card.
Sovereign, Most Holy Trinity, which we make in memory of the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we make it in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they, whose memory we honor on earth, intercede for us in heaven. Please, rise to pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable unto God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, as we this day recall the 100th anniversary of this parish, we thank you for having filled this church with your glory and holiness. May this offering of the bread and wine, as well as our lives, be acceptable to you. For you live and you reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we would find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by this Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, 
and rising from the dead grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, in order to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said take this, this all of you and drink from it for this, this is the cup of my blood that the blood of the new and the last covenant which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins and as often as you do this we do it in remembrance of sin We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them, showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, indeed, the very body and blood of Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, indeed become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, preserve it in peace. Remember our prime bishop, Anthony and me, diocesan, and all who minister in your church. Remember all those people who seek your truth, whose needs and desires we now lift up to you in our silent prayer. Remember as well all those who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone, and whose lives we now recall to mind. Bring all of these, our beloved dead, into the place of eternal joy and light, and grant that they may find inheritance 
with the, the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the <coughs> prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? And the bread, which we break. Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because of this one's bread, we who are many come from the body, for we all are taken from one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Would you now share with each other in a sign of peace?
Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, you are the death of our life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil, keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me depart from you. Amen. 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 I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I want to say the word that I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me unto life everlasting.
are the gifts of God. For you, the people of God, take them now, remembering that Christ died for you, and feed upon him now with great, great thanksgiving.
you are the temple of God. And God's Spirit dwells in you. The temple of God is holy. You are that temple. Let us rise for prayer. O Lord and Savior, we know the joy and power of your blessing in our lives, especially as we celebrate this 100th anniversary of Saints Peter and Paul Parish. Strengthen us by your holy body and blood that we may rededicate ourselves to serve you through your holy church. For you live and you reign with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, I am sure that you have seen the big banner at the front of the church with the words, Glory to God. We are just here to give the glory to God for 100 years, for the anniversary of this beloved parish. A hundred years ago, our Predecessors, the founders of Saints Peter and Paul Parish, had made a decision to follow the lead of Bishop Francis Hodur. In seeking to <clears throat> remain in the historic Catholic and Apostolic faith. For ten decades, Saints Peter and Paul Parish has been a place of prayer in which the Lord has blessed you as you come to him on your way of pilgrimage. And it is with great honor and privilege that we are here today to give God the highest praise and thanks for his wonderful kindness as we celebrate our, our 100th anniversary of our parish. Therefore, our parish family is very happy to welcome Bishop Schodur successor, His Excellency Bernard Nowicki, Bishop of our Diocese. We are honored to have him here with us as we celebrate this historic moment in our parish. We welcome and thank you, Bishop Bernard, for being a part of this great day with your time and presence. We also welcome the clergy of our Plymouth Senior at with Father Senior Lucian Urbaniak and Father Robert Plichta, and also Father Senior Tadeusz Dymkowski, Father Senior Donald Wanderlich, Richard Wojciak, Edward Chudak, Bogdan Juczyszyn, and Dickens, Michael Seward, Joseph Kibasa, and Robert Karosik, and Cleric Sean Dell. A special note of appreciation in extended to all our parish members, friends, and our guests including the members of the Music Commission of our Diocese for the beautiful music and songs. It is hard to describe how meaningful it is for our parish to have each of you here today. I would be remiss if I did not thank to all volunteers who coordinated our effort all those offered their time and talent to prepare this 100th celebration to parish committee with Debbie Seifek as a chairperson, our organist Jonathan Johnson, Lector Louis Seifek and author server, servers Diane and Evan. Lastly, let me thank everyone who assisted in the preparation and implementation of today's liturgy and especially all of our faithful and friends who are in attendance. Thanks to everyone who made the 100th anniversary such a great celebration. Really, God is good. So happy 100th anniversary, anniversary to all of you.
Amen. Mm-hmm. 